Hi everyone, this is Esther Vasudevan and we're back for another episode of uh, the Murali Pod after incredible day at the Dambulla International Cricket Stadium. I'm joined once again by Madhushka Balasurya. Uh, it's been a couple of hours, lights are still on fortunately for us to record. Uh, Madhushka, just again, getting your thoughts on the game. How are you feeling right now? How do you even explain something like this, honestly? Um, I said it before and I'll say it again. In terms of cricketing achievements by a Sri Lankan side, men, women, whatever it is, you've got 96, you've got 2014, and now you have 2024. I just, just for the sheer, you don't get underdog stories like this yeah. nowadays. You know, like 2020, 2021, these girls didn't play, they barely played any cricket, right? 2022, they got back into it. And then suddenly, 2023 onwards, they are beating England, beating New Zealand. And now you, you've just, not just beat India, you yeah. beat India. Yeah. This, this this was a pretty dominant performance. I don't think, like, I, I mean, we're, we're talking about the emotions of it, but in terms of actually what they did, they chased it down like they've done this... You know, they've been doing this all <laughs> all their lives. It was incredible. Yeah, and, and it's great that you mentioned the previous series wins, right? Because with England, a lot of people will talk to you about, you know, they didn't have Sophie Eccleston, they were resting a couple of players, it wasn't a full-strength team, blah, blah, blah. With New Zealand, they'll say it's a team on the decline, right? But there's no excuse for this. India's full strength, right? India coming in as red-hot favourites. We spoke about it before as well. I mean, to me, still, still, India is one of the favourites to take the World Cup later in the year. Oh, for sure, right? for sure. And to do it against a team like that, it's just, it's insane, right? I, I, I would tell you, honestly, coming for this tournament from day one, I didn't believe Sri Lanka would go through to win it, right? It, it, it seemed an impossible dream. Um, just because, like I said, like it seemed like India is so far ahead of other teams in the subcontinent. I, I mean, I did a couple of podcasts before uh, the tournament, and my only thing was like, if they chase in the final, maybe they'll have a chance. And <laughs> you know, that's what happened. Even that chance is a very slim one, right? But somehow they've 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 pulled it off. Did you think that? I mean, did you give them a chance coming in? I I thought everything would have to go exactly to plan. I thought we'd need to win the toss, we'd have to chase, mm -hmm. we'd have to keep India below 180. Mm -hmm. And if we kept them below 180, we'd need Chamari to bat through or bat at maybe 75% of the game. And honestly, I spoke to Chamari after the game and that was her thinking. Yeah. She when she was like, she she was upset when she got out mainly because she wanted to score at least another 25 to 30 runs mm. because then she's like then i would be confident or like i'd be comfortable with the rest of the team chasing it right which means she wanted to get the with get the required uh, score below 50 50 required yeah. as it was it was 72 required or 48 when she fell and just to go back to uh, the whole thing with the toss it kind of goes to show you even the mentality that India came in with, right? They won the toss and they elected to, like, they didn't, chasing would have been the smart thing to do. It would have made Sri Lanka's work twice as hard because they just, they're not comfortable setting a, setting a score like we spoke about earlier, Esther. So it would have made it very difficult for Sri Lanka. But India was so confident, they just simply looked at the, the, the pitch they saw it, they were like, okay, best batting conditions is when batting first. We'll bat first, we'll put a score, we'll defend it. They weren't even thinking, I don't think, about what Sri yeah. Lanka's strengths, what Sri Lanka's weaknesses were. And yeah. that just goes to show what the match matchup actually was. Yeah, actually, that's the thing. I think 
I wouldn't say like batting first is a bad option here because like you said, batting friendly conditions, right? So you want to get a big total and then put the team under pressure. I'm sure they were watching the semi-final between Sri Lanka and Pakistan and saw how much pressure Sri Lanka had to absorb, right? Right at the end. I mean, in that game when Shamari was dismissed, Sri Lanka needed like 20 runs and they still took it down to like the last two deliveries of the game, right? Um, but yeah, I, I don't think they really considered that Sri Lanka are better chasers. I think they're quite terrible batting first. Uh, if I if I'm not being too harsh, um, they really struggle to set a set a total on the board. Um, so they they kind of Sri Lanka was happy because you know they got what they wanted in the end. Um, just I mean, from India's point of view, I don't I wouldn't wouldn't say that they took Sri Lanka lightly or anything. I think they just wanted to go according to their game plan and see where things yeah. took them. Um, yeah, go on. Yeah, so um, let's get into the game itself after the toss. It was a much better bowling performance in the power play, wasn't it? I mean, I feel like, and, and we saw this the, when India toured Sri Lanka a couple of years ago for the bilateral, right? Uh, where Sri Lanka's plan was basically keep Shafali and Smithy quiet in the power play. Yeah. The wicket will come because both are aggressive players. They want to go after the bowlers. So you keep them quiet, you get the runs. And I don't know, I, I don't know whether anyone's been watching our pod, but they gave Inoshi the two two overs today. And and it worked out brilliantly because again that okay, so they had some drop chances. It yeah. was and it was worse than the last game in that <laughs> sense, but their ground fielding was spot on this time, right? They they hunted everything, and I think I don't know. They I just felt like they were energized by the crowd from the get go. Yeah. Because because here the crowd was pretty much ninety percent full by the time the match started. Mm. You know, whereas the, whereas last time it was still building. Yeah. Here the crowd was in. They were invested, and like every dot ball was cheered. So the fielders won it, and. Honestly, that makes it all the more impressive. We'll get into that in a little bit about the mentality and the mental shift that this team has had over the last year. But when Harshita dropped Smriti early on, I mean, you looked at her face and she just looked crestfallen. She looked like, and then she she did it again. She dropped Richa Ghosh, a, a tougher chance, but still something that should have been taken later on in the innings. And then you have the the almost a third nail in the coffin, which is. There was a very clear outside edge that was not given. And then Richa Ghosh only goes on to score 18 runs in that over, right? Taking India to a much more competitive score total than they otherwise would have got. So Sri Lanka had a, quite a few setbacks in this in this innings and they, and they still didn't let it get to them. And I think that really speaks towards a mental shift in this side that has really pushed them towards being like, the winners that they are today. Yeah, just just on Harshita, you know, I have to say, when she put down those catches, and they cost Sri Lanka about 70 runs, right? Because Smithy was yeah. on 20, if I, uh, 10 or 20, 10 um, in the fifth over, 10 or yes. 15, I don't know, whatever 10, 10. number. It was, it, was, it was 10, it was 10. And she went on to score 60, and then Risha was like five, less than 10 she runs. Was, she was on 5 when she was Yeah, dropped. so it ended up costing Sri Lanka well over 50 runs, right? And then you thought, look, she's not going to have a good time with the bat because she's going to have that at the back of her mind. It's, I mean, you're only human, right? Yeah. How do you forget something like that when it costs costs your team so much? And so then she comes I... out and she plays that innings, right? How it's, it's... like how strong should, do you need to be mentally to come out like that? So I actually asked um <clears throat> i asked chamari this exact question like what do you say and and chamari was very forthright she's like this is what we've been working on yeah it's about not dwelling on those moments if there's a miscatch if you know you have, you have a bad decision go against you anything happens okay you're upset fine but then focus on the next thing that you can do and for for harshita the thing she said was all right this happened but now go out and bat, right? And do and do your best there. And then when batting as well, 
she was constantly obviously reassured and i think i think that was probably the best thing that happened to harshita because she had a skipper there with her yeah. throughout a majority of that innings and she was given the confidence because if you noticed early on in the innings yes chamari was playing the strokes but harshita was happy to just give the strike she was yeah. trying a few things but even if it didn't come off i don't think there was any sort of chastising or anything like that mm. and eventually when 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 she got out when uh, chamari got out she was she said she had said before that if i get out you need to you need to take it on mm. and i mean all these things are so much easier said than done yeah but it was done in, and it was done emphatically you know a right up to kavisha dilhari coming out and batting like a reacher ghost just yeah striking absolutely. the ball to all parts taking the pressure off and then both of them and like i said i think kavish uh, sorry harshita hit a 90 meter 6 she she looks like she's still 18 she's tiny it was wind assisted sure but this ball flew and you're just like where is this strength coming from this inner strength and the players have just been inspirational honestly yeah and you know just coming back to chamari right what you were talking about in that partnership i think it's so important to point out how much weight she takes off the other players i mean we we've, we've been talking about we've been saying it i mean at least for a year on this pod about how sri lanka is no longer a one woman team they have they have few other players who will step up and get you runs when you need it you they'll get you wickets but in a moment like that surely chamar knew right harshita is not in the best state of mind yeah but the weight she takes off other players by saying look you just rotate the strike i will take care of things that's the attitude she brings right like i mean i i'm not a body a body language expert or anything but even in the field even after those dropped catches you didn't see sri lanka's shoulders drop you didn't see them being sloppy in the field and you know missing uh, deliveries balls that were coming straight towards them or anything right the ground fielding remained quite good right throughout the game there were a couple of miss fields yes but you didn't see those shoulders drop when smriti was scoring right when risha was scoring you didn't see that and i think it that like you said it goes to show the mental strength and also the environment they are playing in because if you look at the squad as a whole apart from a couple of players here and there This is the same squad that played under Hasan Tilakaratna, right? Yeah. It's a few changes that have come in. The shift has been up here. There was a time you could see that even the other players didn't believe they could chase something if Chamari got out. Yeah. But that's not the case anymore. Even the other day if you look back at Anushka Sanjeevani, she had that look of I'll handle it. Like Sugandhika, you go after the bowling. if you get out i'll handle it right and today just chamari atipattu is gone with 72 needed of 48 i think india thought the game was done at that point oh yeah that that celebration india celebration after chamari's wicket you could see uh, harman preet went up to uh, who picked up the wicket i can't uh, exactly remember deepthi sharma deepthi sharma she went up she held the face and she you could see they were making eye contact and she was like yes you know trust could so it's not like india weren't doing their own kind of um mm. mental stability exercises and trying to centering their themselves they were going for this you know they they had the utmost faith that uh, that this would go their way yeah that that their experience would tell and i think it's a huge credit to these young girls for just stepping up and making light of a very very <laughs> difficult uh, chase in very a very high pressure situation and yeah. not just the final the crowd the crowd was so expectant and you know in the end the crowd were like there was no pressure like it was like okay we're going to win <laughs> yeah i think actually to be honest i think in this game it feels like the crowd actually instead of pressure they actually boosted their performance in 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 the semi final I think they really felt it that oh yeah. my gosh all these people have turned up they are all expecting us to win but that you didn't feel that today right there was no tension 
there was almost this kind of freedom which is which is something they talk about right like um i was just looking at the the ball by ball athapattu gets out in the 12th over the next over they get 5 but the following over 14th over that's when harshita kicks on she hits a 4 and a 6 to vastaka just kind of flipping things to say we are not okay. done we are in this right and it it there comes a time i think in a game when a batter starts playing some shots when it looks like you can't dismiss them and i think that happened with kavisha and harshita today it has happened many many times with chamari alpattu today it happened with that pair you just felt like they're not getting out they're finishing this game 100% and just going back to what we said earlier about sri lanka setting a total so i asked uh, ramesh ratnayak the same thing and he 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 acknowledged that chasing was their best chance of course but he was like listen in the event we do have to bat first they were like 170 we yeah. need to get to 170 and from the way they batted you kind of got the sense that that is they were batting to that regardless yeah. because that was what that hitting at the end was they were, i mean if that was a first innings knock we would have come we would have probably got to 180 yeah <clears throat> the way those two were going and i just think just the more experience they have as a side setting targets defending because they have the bowling to defend mm. right they have the bowlers to defend um and speaking of the bowlers just to segue yeah. into a separate point yeah uh, nisan sala So yeah. they brought her in for this game. She played one match all tournament. She had she played her first T20I or first any sort of cricket for Sri Lanka this May since back in 2022. Yep. Right. Mm. So there has been a two-year gap. She comes in, plays one match in the tournament, and then she's in the final. And I asked Ramesh, so what was the thinking? He's like, they wanted to bring her in for the semi-final as well, but there was a team discussion and a vote, and they decided to go with the experience mm. of Achini. but over here they felt that an extra spinner on this surface would prove a little bit more difficult to get away and that she had been bowling really well mm. in the nets and so it proved i mean she was very impressive yeah she picked up harman preet right <laughs> probably <laughs> exactly. i mean the biggest biggest wicket you can get from that indian lineup yesterday uh, we actually came for the training session there were only six sri lankan players it was an optional training um the players who we thought would be reserves were the ones there so sachini was here shashini gimhani was here uh, kavya kavindi ama kanchana and also nilakshi and hasini were also there and sachini was bowling really well right she was um, hitting all the markers the coach had set for her right bowling really well what i love i mean i, I don't want to reveal your age madhushka but we are into our 30s right what i love about the younger generation in the sri lankan team is they are superbly confident they are confident they don't shy away from interviews they don't shy away from tough situations right they're not afraid to kind of be out there and that is so great to see because in the past i mean i've had experiences where even people who have captain were a bit too shy to speak at a press conference or you know things like that right but you have these kids coming up 21 22 years old they're not they're not timid anymore right they've got that mindset of you know being a aggressive um, cricketer and that's so good to see especially like sachini i'm sure a lot of them come from down south they come from difficult yeah. situations right not great economic back- backgrounds right so they've they've known hardship as well so i think they come as like toughened up kids into this team right they're not afraid of hard work um, and that's like so great to see from all of them um to go back to the bowlers i think you know i i spoke to the indian coach after the game or at the press conference and he said he they were happy with 165 but i don't yeah. know if he was being honest about that because i think the way smithy was going they would have probably been targeting around 180 but i think uh... they would have but at the same time again credit to our girl, bo- girls because they didn't yeah. um there were not many loose deliveries whatever mm-hmm. like smriti was manufacturing some really nice shots and then of course our uh, right was there and again same thing with risha ghosh yeah. so they they there was not 
like they were not giving away easy runs they kept the extras to a minimum and yeah yeah they didn't let them get away get away with things i think right like you've seen situations where you know someone like smriti or shafali gets off to a good start and then they just accelerate they yeah. didn't really allow them to do that barring that one over right at the end when as you mentioned risha ghosh was caught behind but the umpire missed it right um so the bowling i think goes a bit unsung and it has right throughout this tournament because even against pakistan in the semi pakistan getting 140 was a brilliant effort by the bowlers because the feeling was really bad that day so they didn't get a lot of support so much good work done by the bowlers sugantika kumari is one um and i have to say kavisha dilhari is a superstar all rounder right i mean yeah. she is doing it with the bat but if you look at her strike rate with the ball she's i mean in this tournament she's been sri lanka's most successful bowler and right throughout the last 12 months she's seen so much success with the ball as a wicket taker yeah i still remember uh speaking to simon willis when they had just discovered her and he was the head of the high performance center so this would have been somewhere circa 2017 16 2018. 17 yeah yeah right and the words he used were she's a competitive beast mm. right and i i i found that a, a very striking description of a then i think what 16 year old 17 yeah. year old girl right but you can just see it in her she she really just wants to play she's yeah. that kid who will sit there like and play cricket on the streets in the backyard all day every day and, and she wanted to finish it with a six right she wasn't thinking look <laughs> let's do it in single that's, she wanted to stamp it in right we are winning that's this that's character that's that's character you know i was looking at her stats this year 16 games she's bowled in she's only gone wicketless three times mm. she is impactful every single time and i think today was probably the most expensive she's been in Yeah. ages and that's also just because of that one one over one over like you you take that away you cut that in half and it's again an exemplary economy rate uh two wickets and yeah she's and then a match winning knock which just completely yeah. took the pressure off yeah i think that i know harshita was a i mean deserved player of the match right but the amount of pressure again kavisha took off her when she came in because you know what i like is that they did learn from the last game they learned that they don't they shouldn't once atapattu is gone don't try to rebuild attack yeah. right go for it because that's they kept doing that every over every over after atapattu's dismissal you were getting one two boundaries right and that's how they pulled this off because they didn't I get the feeling they didn't want it to get close like last time. They didn't want to oh, get, no. take it to the last over. And I think that's what India might have been banking on. Yeah. I mean, seventy-two or forty-eight. You don't expect them to finish it one over early. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, because like, like I mentioned before, this is India's India's best bowling lineup. I think, barring Shreyanka Patel, um, who was injured early in the tournament. this is their bowling lineup right i mean they haven't used they they used only five bowlers today they didn't really use uh, their part time options but you know you, you don't get much tougher bowling uh, lineups to come up against especially in conditions like this where there is assistance for the spinners as well so i thought her innings was superb again like talking going back to the point i made about confidence you were talking about uh, what simon willis had to say Uh, I remember being at Kavisha's first game. It was played at Dambulla. Me and my colleague we interviewed her after the game, right? And here this 16-year-old comes up, spoke like, gave us like long answers, one minute, and and you know, right? Yeah. Having worked in this industry, that it's very very difficult to get these girls, or uh, sometimes even the guys, to speak, I am like so give you a proper angry. answer. whenever i see uh, my indian colleagues at cricket info speak to like kohli and rohit in pre- i'm so envious because they get <laughs> these detailed analysis of the game of their own innings of their of the opponents innings all the intricacies of 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 where the game went wrong and right and the momentum and all that and, and sometimes i mean 
you just sit with some of our guys mm. from the men's team and you very just, very difficult to get anything yeah, out of them I right i don't want to name names but like i don't think i've had a captain post mahela sanga that really <laughs> sat and actually analyzed what the reason yeah. for the defeat was so it's very refreshing because even uh, chamari after the pakistan game was so eloquent when it came yeah. to analyzing because it's not like she was sitting there and being like oh yeah we feel that badly we should mm. have caught mm. this or that no she was like yeah so when we dropped the catch the momentum shifted and yeah. it was very difficult to regain that momentum mm. and then when the, with the ground fielding again we were trying to keep the pressure but we were letting the momentum go but you know that 15th over from sugandhika that was amazing and that really shifted the momentum back and and you're thinking wow that's good analysis you're 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 not just and that's right from... after the game right <laughs> yeah i mean she it's not like she had time to let it stew and you know think up all these things no it, no she's it... yeah go yeah. ahead no i said no, she she clearly understands what's going on she's thinking about it constantly yeah um i want to come come back to the coaches right ramesh ratnayake in particular um i don't know i don't know right we 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 are not part of their conversations or discussions i would love to be but uh, we are not but something that keeps being repeated by most of the players who you speak to is that the environment being created by the coach is why we are seeing the success i mean we spoke to uh, anushka after the semi final uh, spoken to chamari in the past right talking about the freedom and the positivity yeah it's it's so it's almost like they willed themselves to this win right yeah it's 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 self manifestation mm-hmm. and i was speaking to ramesh and honestly he's a really humble guy because he he just kept trying yeah. to deflect he just kept trying <laughs> to deflect to the girls so i'm like no no listen i mean i'm just getting this for like some background I, i'm not going to put your quote <laughs> front yeah. and center this this is obviously about the girls but i just want to know like what's the secret like these are the girls that were really kind of struggling to like compete with the best sides and now suddenly mm. they're putting up pulling out consistent dominant wins what's going on and he said the same i mean what i could gather was there was just a lot of again not dwelling on mistakes positive mm. thinking and just focusing on the next thing it's literally ball by ball yeah. so if it's bowling just focus on doing the best for that next delivery if mm. it's batting it's that next delivery and i don't know how he's done it though because like you said you need to be a fly on the wall yeah but he's done some jedi mind trickery there <laughs> and he's he's gotten it into them and all these girls bar none cuz cuz we spoke about Anushka Sanjeevani and you were like she's been really good domestically for a while but yeah. internationally she just couldn't crack it and now suddenly she's this lord enforcer yeah. how where, where did where did that come from and that's this this is where it came from suddenly these girls are able to execute their best skills when it matters and listen we've all read up and heard the story of Brendan McCallum doing this with the new zealand team and all that and obviously this is not baseball by any means but that the the common thread is the mentality yeah if you're able to play fearless cricket and that's his that is i think that is key word fearlessness mm. if you're able to actually play fearless cricket and mm. i think this also goes back to what you mentioned estelle your observation on the fact that there's really no depth mm. and because there's no depth these players have been persisted with So of course you can play fearless cricket if you know right you're not going to really be dropped on the back of like a couple of bad performances. So they they've had all these weird things that are not by design. None of it's by design mm. come together <laughs> and in true Sri Lankan fashion we've we've managed to make it work. Yeah, I mean not by design. I should mention I think you've done a piece on it already today. I don't think Ramesh Ratnayake was supposed to be coached this long because there was no official appointment uh, or announcement of his appointment. Yeah. Um there was no I don't think there was ever any announcement that okay he is coached. 
he just I happened to take over. I believe he was at the high performance center. And when Hashan Tilakaratna moved to Bangladesh, That's right. they just got the players to train under him. So, and then suddenly, <laughs> we're going into the World Cup. I'm not saying we have a chance at the World Cup. But after this performance, who's going to say Why we not? have no chance, right? Why not? And it's funny you mentioned that because I, 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 I just did some digging earlier trying to figure out when was Ramesh even hired, right? And then there was an article I found and the headline was simply, Ramesh Ratnayaka bails out Sri Lanka cricket. Okay. Because, because they didn't have a coach just before mm. the 2023 World Cup in Feb, mm. right? So that's just a little over a year ago. They yeah. didn't have a coach and then he just sort of stepped in and they had a pretty decent showing. He kept going at it. He was like, okay, let's go to England. Yeah. <laughs> and I, it's like one thing led to another. It's like, if this was a rom-com, it would be amazing. It's like, yeah. you know, it's, it's a little meet cute. It's like that everything has kind of worked out the way it's, no one it's could have wild. imagined, right? It's not something that someone could have written. Like I said, like coming here, I don't, I mean, it, Please, if you know someone who believed that Sri Lanka would pull off this win, please get in touch because, I mean, I don't think anybody did. It's just an incredible achievement. Um, I think we can, we've covered everything. We've gone through all the emotions. I want to talk about one small thing before we go. The Sri Lankan women's team are play, paid 750 USD per match. Yeah. Surely that has to go up now. It has to. It has to go up. And I mean, it's only a matter of time, right? Because I mean, that increase happened recently. Yep. But I, we were speaking about this uh, off camera earlier, which is about it's sport is not about whether like how good someone is. Okay. It is about how good someone is. But like you're going to have different levels. Like if you, if you watch football, you watch, yes, you watch the English Premier League, okay? Everyone watches the English Premier League. But do you know how many people in the UK watch the league below, the ch like the Championship mm -hmm. League one? The, these are all televised and it's watched by loads. And that calibre of football is nowhere near the calibre of football that you would find at the highest level. But people watch it. And it's the same with cricket. We will we'll watch the LPL also, and we'll watch the IPL. No one is sitting here saying, yeah. okay, maybe Mark is saying <laughs> that. <laughs> but, but, but aside from Mark, no one is sitting here and like genuinely comparing the LPL yeah. to the IPL. But, but you could compare the entertainment value. Yeah. Because you might not compare the cricket. But yeah. the LPL every season has been entertaining as all hell. Because, and this season in particular, yeah. has been very entertaining to watch. And the more people that actually tune in and watch it, the better. And I think now with women's cricket, it's going through a moment in Sri Lanka. Yeah. The, the crowd today was, I can't speak highly enough of that crowd. You know, it's... It felt like a dream to me. I don't know. It felt like a dream to have like... I, I mean, like I said in the last episode, Cricket for says 16,800 capacity. I'm sure there were six, at least 16,000 people here, right? Oh, no, today I think there might have been more because all the seats were taken and uh, the the free, the, the little, the cheapest seating area was taken up front and the embankments on top of it. Yeah, and like the, I mean, we the press box is right above the grandstand, right? Oh, yes. And there's there's an like, there is like, there is a little like a flow upstairs, I don't which know was also full. I don't, know I don't think they're supposed to be. supposed to be there. Yeah, I was actually concerned about the weight <laughs> capacity at one point. But I was like, you know, if I die, I'm going to die happy here. If I'm crushed, <laughs> it's going to be for a great cause. Because it was packed. And, packed. The fans, and the fans didn't leave. They were here yeah. right throughout. And even about an hour after everything was done, the match was done, you still had some fans. You had some fans that were standing outside. And these were kids, young kids, girls, yeah. boys. And they were just shouting, Chamari Akke, Chamari yeah. Akke. And then she came out with the trophy. And she waved <laughs> at them. And it was a huge row. And I'm like, this is what it's yeah. about. Yeah. This is, a, you know, that's, that is it. That's what it's about. It's, we are witnessing 
a, a moment in history, right? Yeah. We spoke about it last time as, as well. It is like I was telling you off air, yeah, I'm seeing so many people who, especially women, I'm sorry, there's a dog fight outside, yeah. if you guys can hear it. Um, there are lots of dogs in Dabola, all very friendly. Yeah, so one, uh, but they I, seem... think one of the, I think one of the dogs that said that Sri Lanka can't win the World Cup and the others <laughs> are just like really upset at him. So like I was saying before the dog fight, um, I am getting so many messages and I'm seeing so many posts on Facebook from women who say that, you know, as kids they like cricket, then they lost touch with it. But now this team is want, making them want to watch cricket more. And I think it's like, I mean, there are going to be loads of people, you know, talking about how shit the men's team is and how badly they're doing. But I don't think it has anything to do with that. I think it's simply a fact of relating to the player you see, right? It's you you're seeing there. Like for me, and I've spoken about this on this pod before as well. Um, Just keep going. Every, they're really going at it. Um, so when I was growing up, like I'm, I'm only a year, I'm a year older than Chamari, right? When I was growing up, the idea of playing cricket for Sri Lanka as a woman, it did, didn't even, like, it, it didn't compute, right? Because we only saw the men. We saw the men on TV. We loved the men's team. We loved, you know, cricket. But that idea that oh if i play cricket i can play for sri lanka as well it never enters your mind right it doesn't. but now it's like this is this is history this is like a moment in time that like you're witnessing something special that it's going to change how the game is going to be played in sri lanka because there are surely going to be more girls oh, yeah. thinking i want to play this i want to be like chamari right this it's such a great point to make because I was having a very similar conversation with my wife the other day after the Pakistan game. So I was just on the phone with her. I was just telling her about what had happened and all that. And she made the almost exact same point, which is about how when, when she was growing up, if she was playing cricket, so she's of Indian origin as well. Mm -hmm. So if she was playing cricket with her old, older brother and the cousins, literally all she got to do was fetch the ball. <laughs> so they just send her to fetch the ball. Like they'd hit a shot, you go with that. She didn't get to bowl, she didn't get to bat, right? And when she complained, none of the adults would take mm -hmm. any, any sort of notice because you know, you're a girl. Go play with your dolls, you know? And that might sound stereotypical, but it's there's a reason it's a stereotype. Yeah. Because this is what you would face as a young girl. And like, it, it, it permeates right through to sort of any sport, right? Like, like, if, like at the, at lately, we started playing paddle, you know, the, the, oh, the yeah. tennis type. But even that, we realize now, like, I'm picking it up a lot easier because I have experience holding a cricket bag. I, I played mm -hmm. racket sports when I was younger. Whereas as a girl, she was never really pushed into this, mm -hmm. despite her wanting to play. And so even something to play recreationally, you're not empowered. Yeah. And now, the more people see this, if you've got a young daughter and suddenly she wants to play cricket, there's not going to be any complaint. There's not going to be any yes. sort of, oh, no, 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 both of you play, both of you both. And hopefully we're just going to see just a ton more, Yeah. you know, not just Chamaris, but more yeah. Harshitas, more Dilharis, yeah. Yeah. More, more Sanjeevanis, you name it, just bring them all on. <clears throat> Okay, I think we on that note we can wrap it up. Just yes. one one little thing I should add. I think we, we should be really grateful to Dambulla because a lot of people came in today from outside, but the previous couple of games it was all people from this area and they really, really I think they were the players were also really motivated to play well seeing them, right? So big thank you also to Dambulla for that support. I hope this is only something that is going to grow in in the in the future. Um, I think we can wrap it up then. Thanks if you've stayed with us this long as we've kind of gone through our emotions. We've rambled, we've, we've yeah, rambled. rambled on about uh, Sri Lanka's win. Um, thank you for staying with us. You can subscribe to the YouTube channel. 
you know follow us on twitter instagram wherever uh, don't forget to catch I, I forgot to actually mention it last time don't forget to go to crick info and check out what madushka is writing about oh, the games cuz i mean those are fantastic pieces as well um so we'll catch you next time i think it might be a week or so when we come back with um something from the india sri lanka series the men series um yes. thanks for thanks for joining me again madushka last minute i hope we'll see you in future episodes of murali pod oh, as well cuz it's been awesome yeah looking forward to it and looking forward to just going to way more women's cricket going forward awesome i hope a yeah. lot more people are saying that tonight and it will continue in the coming weeks uh thanks everyone we'll catch you later bye